everything is different. See, when they built that house out to Glen Farm, them freezers all moved in there. All, all around the house, they're all boxed. All, all around them, it's boxed. And on the, on the water side of the house, there's two big maples, I mean, elms. Oh, they're about 100 feet high. See, they cost $3,000 a piece to put them in there. They were put in by a New York firm from Long Island. Oh, they're monsters. And you see, you see them playing trees today, they've all got wire on them. In the old days, they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to do it. And they wrap them with the cloth. Mr. Martin didn't believe in that because a tree had to breathe like you and me. They breathe through the bark. And the only time to move a shrub or a tree is when the leaves were off it because the sap is down here. Now the sap is up there. See? See the trees all in bloom. That's the bad time to move them. Certain things like rhododendrons, mountain laws and all them things, they do them under cold weather when the sap is down. Mm -hmm. Remember in 1973 when the uh, the Navy fleet left Newport? They went with, with their, about 24 destroyers, I guess, went out here. Was that good for Newport or bad for Newport? It was bad at that time. Yeah. What about? Well, I think today it's, it's picked up because you got all this equipment down here. And you got the shipyard up here now that up on the, making the Coast Guard boats. The director shipyard? Yeah, and you yeah. got. The train station is awful big now. They got so many schools. They got thousands of men over there. Oh, they're building new buildings over there. Three million dollars, a new commissary and a barber shop and a beauty parlor. It's going to be all new. And they're going to tear the other one down, I guess, and make more parking or something. Oh, I think they've done good around here. I think without the Navy, there'd be a lot out of here. Did it affect you in any way no. when all those ships left? Well, the Quonset, well, Quonset's picking up now because the electric boat took care of mm -hmm. most of it. They got about four or five thousand people working up there. But that was some place up there, you know. That belonged to Senator Green owned all that property. I'm gonna stop. So we'll keep going then. Well, what are they going to do? Make a book out of this or something? Well, they uh, they want to keep this on file so that people will can hear firsthand, you know, what people who've been around for a long time have to say. Now, in some cases, they might transcribe it so you could read it look like a book, but that takes a lot of money to yeah. do that. So I don't know. Well, I, I uh, well, I've done one of these for a rich lady. Not, not all, not different things than this. And yeah. She had this girl type it. Quite a job. Now, where is that? Do you do you have a copy of that? No, she's no. in Washington, the woman now. Oh. But she wanted to, she said to me one day, let's go somewhere and talk. She says, something about when you were a, a young fellow. Yeah. You know, a little fellow. <laughs> she's a very wealthy woman. And, uh, I don't know what her idea was. I thought maybe she's going to write a book or something. Because two or three people offered to pay for if I wanted to get a, to get a ghostwriter. Mr. Morrison owned a bond bread. He wanted me to. Oh, write, really? Yeah. You know. Did anything ever come of that? No, he's no. a poor fellow. He's dead now. Then there was a great writer in Washington, and he used to, he was here, he used to come here. He worked in the White House for 60 years. He was a Jewish man. And uh, he said to me one day, he stood looking at me, he said, did anybody ever tell you you look like Gary Water, uh, Senator Goldwater? And I said, no. He said, well, when I look at you, I think of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Senator Goldwater. Uh, well, tell me uh, about when the, uh, when they had the ferry boat to Jamestown, did, did how often did you take that boat? Oh, I worked there for two summers. When at I the was golf club. At the golf club. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid, that was Benny McClyman was the pro there. He was attorney general after he went to Brown College. He was a nice man. He's dead too. Lord of mercy on him. 
I think he was married to one of Harry Horgan's aunts. Or Harry Horgan's sister, I guess. Didn't he have two sisters, I think? He owned the Opera House, Harry Horgan. The I Opera see. House where? In, uh, oh, in here in Newport? On the, yeah, yeah his, his boy owns it now, I think. Washington Square. Washington Square. Yeah, the sister was married to Bo that owned Chevrolet. I think she was married to Doctor. That that doctor that's the head of the yacht thing. He's a Adelson, not Adelson. What's that doctor's name? He's the head of the yacht stuff. He was mayor one time, wasn't he? I don't know. Sure. But did you like the ferry rides? Did you oh, enjoy sure, them? Sure. You know, one time. Quite a few years ago, there was a man named Tony Leiter that lived here. He hired the ferry, and he had a band on there, and he had the cars, caters from New York, from Providence, and they had beef stew, oh, everything, ice cream cones. And Were you there? Sure, I was there. I was the top man there. I had the list of all the guests, and I had my white coat on, my black tie, and we went all over the harbor. He had it all decorated up with lights and everything. Well, would uh, you remember what the occasion for the party was? Just for a party. What do I do? Why the, the, the meat people? His, he has a sister was married to a man named Mr. Claggett, Thomas Claggett. She left the preservation fifty thousand dollars when huh. she died. They owned a house up on Springston, Bellevue Avenue, and they give it to the Catholic Church. But I think it belonged to Gaia, the Dyer family one time. Fleischer Dyer. He was something the government, it was a government Dyer at one time. I think that was a house right next to the nursing home, the 400, crossing the 400. So what what do you remember about those ferry rides? Oh, they used to be loaded with horses and wagons and stuff going over and vegetable trucks and everything, and they milk trucks. That was quite a place. There was some nice hotels over there then, you know. The Thorndike? The Thorndike and the Gardner House? Oh, yes. They all, some of them burnt down. Right. And then they was, what do they call it, Shoreberry Hill or something? Shoreby Hill. Yeah, well, there used to be a club there. They used to have dances. There was a lot of wealth over there, you know. A lot of wealth. I think, when I, I think, one of the things burnt down years ago, I think it, it was a German ship in here or something at the time. Well, they rebuilt the, the when the Thorndike yeah. burned, they well, rebuilt it. I, I think it. Mr. O'Connor, J.T. O'Connor owned one of them. Oh, really? I think so. I think Mr. Hogan, Harry Hogan's father, they used to call him P.H. Hogan. He owned a brownstone, that was on Thames Street. And uh, I think he owned one of them hotels over there. Because they always had a story that some fella went into Mr. Hogan's place in the Brownstone and he said, is Mr. Hogan here? The man said, no, he's in Jamestown. So they called up Mr. Hogan in Jamestown and told him, there's a gentleman here to see you. Well, he said, you tell him to come over here and bring a pound of nails with him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know, they used to say them things. Yeah. He used to go around a horse and wagon. And they used to say, Mr. Hogan, what are you going to do with all this money? And he says, I enjoy making it, and I hope my family have a good time spending it. He had a big home out on Broadway yeah. at the parking lot there now before he gets to the hospital. He was quite a man. He was a smart man, Mr. Hogan. He owned a lot of houses up in Cary Hill. He owned a lot of places. See, there used to be a big hotel next to the Opera House, the Perry House. Got them little stores in there now. That yeah. was a hotel. That's where the see when I remember the opera house, they used to have a show every week. A different show. These great actresses and actors there. They changed the show every week. And he a uh, man named Comet run the theater then, but belonged to the Hogans. Al Comet, he was an organist from St. Joseph's St. Mary's Church. Al Comet. Oh, there were some great actors up there. Great actors. I remember going to a show there called Jimmy Valentine. He was supposed to be a, he was a robber. He used to rob the safes. He used to sandpapers. <laughs> Jimmy Valentine. 
and I think I think his name was Crane. He was a great actor. His wife was a great actress, and they had a show every week. There was a Newport fellow was in one of them. He was a great singer, Joe Fogarty. He, he was with the Four Roses. They was in the Keats circuit. He used to live down here in James. He only died a few years ago. He was a very good singer. Joe Porter. He ran for council one time. And he was standing outside the church on a Sunday morning. He got, he got an awful beat and running for council. He had more chances I did. And everybody come out and says, oh, I'm sorry, Joe, I voted for you. He said, <laughs> if you all voted me, he says, I'd have been the mayor. <laughs> So what do you remember when they built the Newport Bridge? Do you think people were for that? Oh, there was a lot of people made a lot of money in that job. Boy, they got big pay there. Oh, them, them fellas must have made a fortune working down in them in that water. But do you think Newport people wanted that bridge built? Oh, I, don't, I think it was good. The government built it. They're going to build a new one too, ain't they? Yeah. Oh, I think they need a new one over there. That's awful over there. It's only there's no width to it at all. I think the new one is going to, you can walk on it. It's going to have bicycles. But see, you can't ride a bicycle on this one. You can't walk on it. That's right. Oh, I think it was a good thing. I think it left a lot of money here. But what about uh, where it comes into Newport? Do you think that was a good idea or it should be, uh, should have made it out farther? It couldn't go any further. Where could it go? The government owns. Well, if they, they don't. They from the train station up. They own seven miles. That's seven miles up. They took that whole waterfront. They took all them farms. That uh, Mr. Norman, Brad Norman, they took his land up there. Now, when was that? When World doing, War One. That was during the war. Yeah. Yeah. When they built Bama Road, they call it Bama Road. I don't see why they won't let the state take that over now. Then people going into the shipyard, they go up Bama Road, up to, up to that Duckett shipyard there. He's in all kinds of trouble too, ain't he? He, he just got a lot of uh, $50, fines. $50,000 yeah. fine. Yeah. How about the America's Cup when it, when it started coming here in 1930? What do you remember about the cup races? Oh, that was Joan Prohibition. That was uh, Sir Thomas Lippett. Right, Lipton, yeah. The Irish was a tea, made the tea. Right. Boy, they speakeasies all over town. You could get a drink any place. And you could gamble. They had this, all the slot machines them days. Oh, was, that was that was some people here then, all them all them big sport writers and everything. I think there's more money spent now though. Like last year, the year before. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, every two years it was. Now it's every three. You imagine the money would be spent in Australia now? Did Take you ever work on any of those no. boats or have anything to do with it? Oh, no, there were the fellows working them boats. It's all good mechanics, you know. That's, they, but I mean, because, you know, parties that were related to the cup races at all, were you involved that way at all? No, I don't think they, they didn't get, they didn't do too much for them. I, I, uh, this, uh, this man that bought that shipyard, Mr. Jewett, he's from California. He's the one that's building that place up there on K Street now. The oh, hotel? Offshore, mean? the offshore. The non he owns onshore? Yeah. And he owns the other shipyard. He bought both of them. He's a very nice man. He gave a party for 500 a few years back, and the only new part of that was me. Hmm. I had a special invitation. Then he gave another one on this big steamer, and me and John Lucas Brown and Mrs. Brown were the only natives on it. All strangers. You never saw so much food in your life. Mr. Jewett, he, he owns a beautiful place over here. And Harrison Avenue. Come to he was somebody said he was here about a month ago. I guess he was here signing for the papers. He bought that ship out over mm -hmm. in Washington Street. But he was here he was here all last summer of course. He backs he's one of the big backers. Tons of money they say. 
they got some place in California, Frisco, I guess, or L.A., one of the places. And uh, he always hired two, he used to hire two houses, one for his guests and one for the crew. He used to have that place that belonged to Governor Carey's brother on Ruggles Avenue. And uh, that's where the crew, crew lived. And then he used to hire that place of Mrs. Brown's daughters for his guests. So he must have a lot of that stuff, huh? I guess so. More than you got. <laughs> You don't have too much either. Tell me about uh, when they started fixing up the city and they started uh, the restoration and redevelopment in Newport. Do you know anyone who uh, lost their housing or anything? You know, when they uh, when they redeveloped some of the areas in here in Newport? Tore down. Uh, I don't think that anybody lost any houses. What uh, about when they built America's Cup? Didn't they tear down a lot oh, of buildings they, there? Oh, they tore that whole street down. Yeah. Do you know they, anyone who? Uh, they tore from. They tore from that uh, across from the Ark there, right up to Washington Square. They tore that whole wharf out, that whole thing. And on the other side, where that park is, Trinity Trinity Church. Right, Queen Anne's Park. Yeah, they yeah. tore all them buildings out there. And where uh, the, the Ark is, that used to be a big market there. Apartments upstairs. Mm -hmm. And next door, where that new hotel is, there used to be stores there. And of course, where the post office is, I remember when I was a kid, there was little stores in there. In fact, there was an undertaker in there. I think the name was Cockrum. Of course, the government bought that and tore all the building down with that post office. Now they're doing something in the front, putting a windbreak up or something, Nathan. They've got a big, sky, a big forms up there. But uh, where Trinity, Trinity Park is, that, there was a big laundry there. Jack Egan had a big laundry. Mm -hmm. His son-in-law killed him. And there was stores in the front. Took them all out of there. Oh, it's obvious. Everything's changed. Terrible. So, do you think Newport's? Uh, I don't think it's good the way to go with it. They're they're doing too much redevelopment now. Oh, it's awful! You see that Ocean Drive and everything. You see Buddy Chris. See well, they stuff. took away some of the uh, historic yeah. landmark status. Well, they had yeah. a, a place next door, and then they got the alcohol place. Edge Hill. Edge, Edge, Edge Hill. Uh huh. They tore, they tore that big house down. On that side of it, where that field is, that was a big, big house. They tore down. Then you go up in Walden Farm, go up that back road there and back of there and see them big apartments. You been in there lately? You should see them. Boy, those monsters. You get up there, you can see, I swear you can see, if you had a good pair of glasses, you'd see Providence. You can see the Gov Club, you can see oh, way over to Bailey's Beach. They're way up high. A lot of them up there. I don't know who's buying them. If anybody's buying them, they're advertising all the time in the paper. And then ones go, then ones uh, going into Port Adams. There, they're all in trouble. The banks is selling them all off if they don't get the money. Mm -hmm. Even the ones that bought them ain't paying their taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think it's good the uh, restoration in terms of fixing up the old houses? Oh, and the I mansions? think that Doris Duke has done a great job. <laughs> Beautiful. Some of them houses are wonderful. Look at them, Green Street. I know, I know, rich girl. That uh, Mrs. Johnson, Pippon Johnson, she lives on Mary Street. She's got one of them. And Miss Ariel Frazier, she's got one on Church Street. They just built another one up there. Oh, they're nice. Them things are falling down. They're all along Spring Street. Mm -hmm. She's got about 50 men working. A friend of mine has been working for since she started. Really? I'm a cop, and he lives down here on James Street. And what about the Preservation Society? Oh, that they've done wonderful. They've done wonderful. They, that Mr. Winslow, there's nobody better than him. He's in that book, picture of him and his mm -hmm. wife. He's the head of it. He's the president. And boy, he's all interested. They spend, they spend a load of money on the Rose Cliff. They're putting a whole new terrace in. Right. 
all in white marble. Yeah, I saw that in the paper yeah. the other oh, day. Oh, that's a beautiful place. You wouldn't even see that staircase or nothing yeah. in the country like it. Oh, good. I like that. Beautiful thing. Do you ever been in there? Yeah. Ain't that staircase? It's beautiful. Up? Oh, Mr. Monroe. Well, you know the fire? There's a fireplace. When you go in the big living room, mm -hmm. there used to be an organ there. There was an actress bought that house. And she went back to California and they never shut the water off. The whole thing froze. Right. Yeah, it belonged to Edmund Monroe. He's alive and he's still living, him and his wife. He gave that to the preservation. And three hundred thousand dollars with it. And that other place up there on the corner of Bowery Street, they're working on it. It ain't open, they're doing a lot of work up there. Oh, King's Coke. Yeah, that was given to him. This was Armstrong. That That's a nice house too. Oh, beautiful stuff in there. Look at the arts, look at the work on them houses. Now I know it. Look at the one that Charlie Gini just bought there. Belonged to the Baptist Church down on Sh uh, Shepherd Avenue. You want to see the shingling on that? The, oh, beautiful. That, that's in the, the government books and everything. Shingles are all different cuts. Oh, beautiful. That was people called Watch Sherman. Loads of money. So has, New, has Newport been a good place to live? I don't think there's any place in the world better. I don't care what they say. I always say, it must be good. The wealth of the world has lived here, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Why do they come here? There must be a reason. Hmm? So tell me, because um, I think the uh, this tape is, is going to end soon, so maybe we'll end with this side of the tape. But tell me how how this neighborhood has changed since you were a boy, since you were young. Well, we we used to have little stores down here. They don't have that now. Down on the corner down again, so that Mr. O'Hanley had a grocery store. Next door, the Essex brothers, they had a butcher shop in the same building with two stores. Well, across the street was a grocery store. They used to call a woman Aunt May. Oh, and then on the corner of Dock Island Street, there used to be a fish market. See, you didn't have to go uptown for small things, see. But they used to go up on Saturday, up, up to Jimmy Eddy's. He had a big grocery store. He ground the coffee in there. They roasted the peanuts in there. And on the other corner was the jewelry store. That's where the rich people got all their fancy stuff, like jams and jellies and doing provision. That's where they got their work. <laughs> so there were there a lot of little specialty stores down here? I mean, people specialized in one thing rather than like a big supermarket? No, no, no. And there was uh, quite a few barrooms down here, too. There was one on Connection Street, one on Narragansett, and one on Lee Avenue, and there was three at Young Street, <laughs> but they were just bottom. But you couldn't go in them. But you wouldn't let no kid in one of them. Yeah. Just men. Yeah. Even the women couldn't go in them. The women used to go to the side door. And they'd have the kittle under their cape, and, they, and the fellow would come and take the kittle, ten cents, and they'd fiddle a kittle up for the beer. Now, what was it? A kittle? Kittle, tin kittle. A growler. They call him the grounder. Grounder. Oh, oh, like a like a cup. Oh, just can. More like a, a can. Toilet. Oh, okay. Had a little handle. I remember seeing the women go to the back door, okay. and they knock on the door, and they hand it to the fellow, and he'd go in and fill it with the beer. They get, I don't know how much beer they got, but they said they'd get quite a lot for ten cents. It was only a nickel a glass, and and well, I remember when ten days when. When I'd go up to get my father, my mother would say, go up and get dad, bring him home, he'd be up in the bar. They used to put the whiskey up in the bar and they'd call their own drink. Ten cents. Well, whiskey was cheap. Yeah. Used to have big head, hog heads of whiskey. Was there more of a neighborhood feeling in the old days than there is now? I, 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 I remember when I was a kid, the, They'd always come in, it's, it's, the, my mother would have a new baby, the, the neighbors would come in and they'd help, and, and if you got sick, they'd come in and help. But I think it's a different world today. 
I think everything is different, don't yeah. you? Uh -huh. I mean, sometimes I think everybody's got too damn much. That's what these kids. Yeah. Somebody, all these boys and girls, don't want to live home now, do they? There's a kid down the street. He's got a beautiful home. Here. He don't want to live home. I don't know where he lives. There's a little pull it further down. Four or five of them's got a house someplace. One of my granddaughters won't live home. I don't know why. Well, in terms of the neighborhood, tell me, tell me about the swimming down off the uh, off oh, the water. Oh, they used to swim off the stone pier. They call it down by Ada Lewis. They used to swim there, and where the and uh, where the bathhouse in Kings Park. There used to be a big rocket still out there. I was down there the other day. And with the high tide, it'd be up to the top of it. We used to dive off it, you know. Because we were small and we used to get the cohogs there. Now you can't dig them. Because they got the oil in them now. Yeah, the pollution. pollution. Yeah. You could go so, down. how would you learn how to swim? You would just go down there well, and, just, and just learn? Just, it came to everybody, I guess, you know. Yeah. It came to everybody. Well, when I was a kid, between. You know what Rochambeau is? Oh, yeah, right. Well, between his, that wall there and the stone pier, at low tide, that was all your grass. You'd see it floating. Oh, yeah. It's not there now. Right. 38 hurricane killed all the seaweed. That, that seaweed, that, uh, they call that. When I was a kid, they used to get that and bring it home and put it around the houses because there's no order to it. You use it for, for uh, insulation. Oh. Not long ago, they tore a house down in Little Compton, and they found it in between the walls. Someone was eel grass. Yeah. That's what they call it. Eel grass. Eel grass. It's very. What? It's about a quarter of an inch wide, and it cuts you like a knife. Yeah. And if I ain't mistaken, nobody seems to remember, but I always said there was a girl drowned in that seaweed. Way back years ago, she lived down Star Column Street. They say I'm wrong, but I said, well, maybe I am. How? When did uh, when did Ida Lewis die? Do you remember? Was she around in uh, your day when you were a kid? Oh, well, sure. She she lived up on Spring Street. Her house has got a sign on it next to that Saint Clair. Uh huh. Home. Okay. You see the sign on there. But didn't she used to live at the lighthouse? Yeah, but I think after she. Was up oh, I there. see. Oh, they fixed that up. Mrs. Adams fixed that up. Lovely, they were a animal. She was a, something to do with that club then, after they done it. Did you know Ida Lewis? No, I don't. No. I don't remember. What about uh, the seaweed? Someone was telling me they used to have uh, carts of seaweed be, that would be collected, and people would use it as fertilizer. Oh, sure. Nothing better. They used to get it down to Bailey's Beach. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't get it now, the simple reason now, it costs too much to do it. And uh, they never had these chemicals they got today. You know, like yeah. you can go out and buy a bag of fertilizer yeah. for five or six dollars maybe, or half a bag. If, uh, if you went and got seaweed, it, it wouldn't have the strength that that's got. Yeah. All right, see, you see my grass, how nice it is? I, that's, that's lime. And, and fertilizer, yeah. and that Rhode Island State fertilizer. Oh, I remember they fight with the farmers and that. But it's too ex I, I was talking to a man not long ago about it. He said, Fido, it's too expensive now. You're trying to hire a truck and hire men. Look at what they, the prices they get. Them days, you used to get a horse and wagon for $2. You won't get them today. There is no horses. Yeah. You get a truck, it costs you 50 or 60 or $100 maybe, you know. And then the men, look at the men get six and seven dollars an hour. I remember Dr. Rice has been taking 35 loads off that beach. And it's great for potatoes. It's not good for grass because there's too much sand in it. See? But they make puddings out of it too, you know. Made what? Puddings. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes, sure. You can buy them puddings. It's, I, I had some the other day. I remember when I was a kid, they used to get it and they dry it out and eat it. They used to have it on the bars. People would say, you're crazy. But I said, I didn't never them having it. Well, the Japanese so make I dishes found a piece, with the I found some the other day. It's, it's sort of pinkish. It's a certain type of it. And they make, they make pudding out of that. 
I see a great environment in Boston. They used to go up the Cape. This man told me, and they used to have these big rakes, and they'd pull her off the rocks. Oh. You know, that, that seaweed is loaded with iodine. I remember years ago there was a doctor living in Jamestown. He used to come over to the Newport Beach every day, take his clothes up, put his bag suit on, and he'd walk up and down in that seaweed. And he said to me, he said, this is the best thing in the world for you. Do you remember his name? No, I don't. Oh, that's a long, that's a long, <laughs> long time ago. Now tell oh. me again about uh, the... Uh... Okay. Um, Liberty Bonds. Well, uh, Liberty Bonds, uh, I'm trying to think about whether the savings bond or the Liberty Bond was first. Liberty Bonds. Likely the Liberty Bond was the first one, and then it got into the savings bond. Save your money. Uh, yeah. Don't squander it, and you'll you'll develop the economy of the country, uh -huh. mm -hmm. which was probably a good thing. I don't know. <clears throat> I gather the YMCA was built during this time. Do you remember the fund drive to build the Y? The Army and Navy YMCA. Yes, yes I do. I was then in the, in the fifth grade in St. Joseph's School, <laughs> <laughs> and we used to run out of there and go over and look at that. They had some kind of a structure there, but I mean, this was the this was the time when they built a for real service. The, yes, it was on. Uh, uh, they call, I used to call it the service Y because it was for the servicemen, and you know that was established, and everybody referred to the Army Navy Y and say, "Is a service Y," <laughs> which I suppose was the truth. Uh, did many Newporters change jobs? Do you think? Um, during the war or, or take war related occupations? Uh, a good many of them went into the service, mm -hmm. particularly if they were young enough to qualify, they went into the service. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. The enthusiasm had to be high here because the training station was pushed, the torpedo station, Fort Adams, and all that sort of thing right, right around the circle here. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Red Cross activities? <laughs> Do I remember Red that Cross? Sort of That's what got me into it. <laughs> All those. Catherine Cottrell was a secretary for the Red Cross, and mm -hmm. I used to write about these things all the time, and uh, I was popping and see her, and the first thing you know, I'm in the Red Cross. <laughs> <laughs> and as you know, I went through with the whole damn thing and uh, organized the first polio chapter. Have I mentioned that? What? But I organized the first polio chapter in oh, the no. country. Did you? Because of when the. When did you do this? This was when I was in the Red Cross. There was a difference between the two. And the people that were injured and all that sort of thing, there was no place for them in a sense in taking care of them. So I, I organized the polio mellitus chapter. Holy Omelitas. And I am satisfied even to this moment that it was the first one in the country. What year, do you remember? Well, it had to be in connection with the Red Cross of the end of it. 20 years. We're hanging on the wall, some of those things. We look around. Well, there are dates. In the 1920s? That's a good figure. Mm -hmm. 1920, and then we're now in a couple of years and so on. I, I told you at the beginning, if you excuse my modesty, that I was in everything and doing everything, and I was, uh, I believe no matter you were. what I was, oh, <laughs> and if I didn't have a hand in it, I had to be in it because I was a newspaper man. That's right. I can see that. Uh, what about the homecoming after the war was over, uh, when the servicemen came back home? Do you remember parades or? Well, believe it or not. Uh, little, little known or known, strange as it may seem. Why, says he. We as a, as a we, 
We were licked pretty much there, you know, for a long while. And the servicemen came back in the nighttime in the dark. Yeah, came back in the nighttime in the dark. Yeah, I, I Was there a parade, though, or a welcoming? Uh, no, okay. no, not to my knowledge. Was there then? Was there any? We had no occasion. If what I'm saying to you was the case, and it was, this was no time uh, to celebrate. We got involved in the wrong places and got in all kinds of trouble around the world, I guess. Well, very good. Um, now there are several more topics, but maybe you'd like, you have your own thing, so that there's always time for you to say what you'd like to put on tape to be kept, words to be kept. In the forever in the in our well, archives. Well, I think maybe we better. You had some things written down as you were. Well, I mentioned Jack Haley, who invited me to be the. The historian. Be his yes, right. yeah. Uh, here's a British Navy article to have suggested that. <laughs> oh yes, you showed me that before. I showed you that was during the war. And that was converted into Liberty Bonds and the War Bonds, and that's uh, that's what got me active in the connection with the War Bonds and the Red Cross and all that sort of thing. Um, after the war, um, I guess, was uh, when the 18th Amendment was passed, and, and they're interested in what you remember about Prohibition in Newport. You couldn't uh, ask. You couldn't ask a worse person. If you, why not? Let me interrupt you there, dear, and tell you something which you're not going to believe. I never had a drink in my life of any kind of liquor or wine. Or, hmm. Would you accept it for the? I first? certainly will. My father oh. was exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. Well, what about your friends? Was they did they think it was a good idea or not? What? Prohibition. Oh. Uh, Dad raised hell. <laughs> that was a real problem around. Now that was a that was a terrific thing. Mm -hmm. And like the women's what do you call it, you know? Uh, WCT. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so on. And prohibition, I mean that that could have that almost started a war unto itself. Really? Because everybody in the world but me, I guess, drank. Uh -huh. <laughs> knew we were far. Yeah, that was a that was a troublemaker if there ever was one. Did you hear stories about smuggling and rum running? Oh, see, I was writing about them. Dad. I was right in the midst of it. Oh, sure, they were coming in uh, in the early mornings in their speedboats and pulling up to the docks and Fort Adams and different places. And uh, did you ever see any of the boats? Oh, see, it's, <laughs> my God, sure. It, it was it was getting to be a regular thing. There was no question about anything. Uh, didn't concern me too much, but I mean the general public, they uh, they, uh, they they had a lot of fun, I guess. Uh, that's one of the two stories I'd like to tell you, but I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm <laughs> oh afraid. no, that's quite all right. My goodness, it was such a long time ago. Go ahead. <laughs> well. Uh, <clears throat> you won't get in trouble, I promise. Yeah, how can you promise? <laughs> <laughs> promise, guarantee. <laughs> uh, well, for example, you spoke about uh, today. See, they uh, there was a great deal of rum running, as they called it. And they'd come in in the nights and put the stuff up in the. It, it, it was so common in those days that that restaurant in Tim Street, where they come up from the yacht club. They'd come in there, pull the guns out of their vests, out of their pockets, put them down on the, where the coffee was, and then go back to the boats and go out. Goodness. Unbelievable. That yeah. was the act club was. Yeah. Well, how do you think most Newporters felt about it? Were they sympathetic oh, to it? Oh, everybody in the world but me was sympathetic to oh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how I survived at all. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, nobody liked that. I did. Nobody liked that. Uh -huh. and, uh, were there any speakeasies in your neighborhood? Oh, they were everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. 
Did you know anybody who made uh, and sold home brew their own bathtub? Everybody gin did that too. It was so common. Yeah. Yeah. That was commonplace. Uh, do you think the gangster influence had any uh, effect on Newport? Was oh, it, yes. Were they involved? Yeah. Well, I just cited one thing. They, they, would, uh, they would go out of here on these speedboats and meet, <clears throat> meet the big craft outside, carrying this, this liquor from different parts of the country and the world, maybe and come racing in in the morning with them in the, in the darkness and in the night sometimes, in on the cliffs or over Fort Adam. Yes, I, uh, I remember there one night one of those uh, boats was coming in and the, the, uh, uh, the uh, Coast Guard told them to stop. And it was so commonplace they wouldn't stop. You know what happened? They turned the guns on them and I think they killed four and wounded several others, and they pulled in the Fort Adams over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, evidently, there was, a, there was an incident when uh, boxes of liquor washed ashore. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes, very well do I remember it. Particularly at the end of uh, the cliff walk down there, there was a beach there, and uh, they uh, they used to come in there and throw their lick the boxes on the shore and off again, saying the people would be waiting to pick them up and bring them in and so on. Well, that was uh, everybody was in there, everybody. I guess maybe it's what you were referring to. A boat was sunk and boxes of liquor washed ashore. Did the local police really go out and keep order? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Frank King was deputy sheriff. Anthony was the sheriff. And the thing centered around the sheriff and the deputy sheriff. Now the police <laughs> keep order. No, no such thing as order. And, uh, but you remember the incident. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the one I'm referring to now. Uh, uh, Frank King, because he's long since gone on. He, he used to, when, when they brought them in, he had jurisdiction. And he used to go and get the boxes and look at For example, down below in the sheriff's office, which is presently the courthouse, they had boxes of liquor so high, boxes of bottles of liquor so high, right up to the ceiling, couldn't get any further. <laughs> Frank King and the people used to hang out in his office. Naturally, I newspaper man, I was in the midst of all the time. And the people, he was selling it and all that sort of thing. Everybody was involved in it, I guess, but me. So I remember when, when it was declared, no more. Forget it. It's all... The repeal. Repeal. Mm -hmm. I went in to see Frank King. Course of events, I was still in the newspaper. I knew what I had in mind, all that liquor right up to the ceiling, and all that big play. Well, I said, Frank, now what are you going to do with all that liquor down there? All what? Do with it all what? There wasn't a box or a bottle. Nothing. Yeah. Taken out and sold and given in anticipation of what was This is the sheriff I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a wonderful story. Oh. That's a wonderful story. <laughs> Well, it's a truth, too. Yeah, well, oh, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's very revealing and entertaining. <laughs> um, how about um, after the First World War, um, there was a change in the summer colony in Newport, and they're interested in your thoughts of <clears throat> what the summer colony was like, what life was like in Newport during the heyday with the very, very wealthy people. Um, of course, your father worked for one of them. Um, how did Newporters feel about the summer people? Well, uh, the summer people had to dig right in. And uh, I was again in the midst of something because I was the, 
I was the vice chairman of the Red Cross, and uh, Mort Sullivan, who was the chairman, was in the server, and not in the server, but he was out of the city, so for all intents and purposes, I was the chairman of the Red Cross, and I was also chairman of the war campaign, Red Cross War Fund campaign. Now, that was the biggest thing during the war. And that got all of the all of the women, particularly all of the women, in Newport involved in the Red Cross. So we had we had really a, a Red Cross of some terrific value uh, based on that particular thing, the women in the Red Cross. And this is I'm talking now dear about the elite. Mm -hmm. Running from the mayor up and down and so on. I've got pictures of that, I believe, and, and some stuff maybe not far from here. Well, do you think most Newporters um, felt the summer colonists were um, uh, nice and, and were beneficial to yes. the city? Yes, they definitely were. For example, those who own big. Uh, big boats or fast yachts, all thrown into the war. Yes, they did a terrific job. There's no kidding about that. They did a terrific job. How did the summer colony change after World War, <clears throat> after World War I? Or did you think there was a change? Perhaps well, uh, it's hard to say that there was a change. It, it blended back into its uh, original status, more or less. Um, and, and that brought the, it brought the uh, well-to-dos and the less well-to-dos and the average fella to, together. And uh, the organization stayed on. And it, it was very, very good. Well, there were changes because uh, there were uh, the um, federal income tax uh, prevented some of the rich people from having and using as much money as they had, and mm -hmm. I guess there were a number of uh, a number of staffs that were out of work. Uh, and did you know anyone whose job was in jeopardy or who has lost their job at, because of this? Well, I think those who were in a position to be in the service pretty well went into it without being pushed. Military men, yes, I'd have to think about them. There were, there may have been a dozen that were prominent here. No, I'm thinking of, of um, people who had worked for the summer colonists oh, on their estates, mm -hmm. serving them and, and what they did after, um, when uh, perhaps they were no longer employed. Well, I don't think Did it your made... father work um, for the tailors all his life? Oh, no. My father didn't work for... Um... He, that's right. You said he went to work for armor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know how he could start. I think he was picked up in New York by Henry A.C. Taylor mm -hmm. and brought to Newport. And uh, development then was, uh, uh, well... That's the early part of my youth. I, I never met that tailor. I knew the others, but I never met him because I was very young. Mm -hmm. Then we went out to Eastern's Point for Dr. Doctor, doctor Sweet. Did, doctor, did the young, uh, Dr. Sweet keep his, uh, did, you know, did he keep his house and his staff? Yeah, well, for Dr. A long time? Dr. Sweet, incidentally, was a Providence man. Oh, he was. Mm -hmm. And he summered here, mm -hmm. out there on the point near the Clan Bay Club. And his house. Uh, did he did, did he keep it uh, for many many years? Still there. Oh, he's still there. Well, yeah. his family own it still. On? Uh, no, I don't think he has mm -hmm. any family now. Mm -hmm. uh, the Clan Bay Club is next to it. The stables are there, and so on. Uh, but uh, I think he has long since uh, passed away. Mm -hmm. But it's such an ideal uh, location, you know, right out on the point. You've seen it a hundred times mm -hmm. uh, from the beach. Beautiful location. 
Well, I mean, you must have had lots of contacts with the summer colony you had all your, uh, during the war with the Red Cross. And, and what about uh, through your real estate business at you? Well, it, it, uh, it was helpful in the sense for my business too. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when I sat up there as the acting chairman of the Red Cross during the war, that was a damn prominent position. And no matter how big or small they were on the avenue, they had to come to me and talk to me or become affiliated. And uh, I got along with all of them very, very well, very well. And, and they were tickled to death to have the opportunity to get into the Red Cross. I remember them so they would avoid being hauled into the service. <laughs> oh yes, I can tell you a couple of those to this minute. Oh God Almighty, they're scared to death. They're going to get killed. We want to get rid of big people, big people, the biggest they were. Yeah. And by being affiliated with the Red Cross, they wouldn't be called. That's scared. right. That's right. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> so they came rolling in as fast as they could. No, they wouldn't take a person out of that, even like me working over the torpedo station, wouldn't take me off that job. They wouldn't take you on, a, they wouldn't put you in the service if you had any kind of a federal job at all. Too important, too important. So your contacts with the summer people have all been pretty uh, uh, smooth and friendly. Oh, yes, and thank God, yes. Yeah. And you, th you think this is true most throughout Newport, most of Newport people? What's your opinion? Well, you see, uh, something like a war had to bring them together. They, um, whether they wanted to or not, it had to do it. So it was a great, uh, there's a word for that there, but it brought all those people together and uh, it, it's been the way it should be ever since. But uh, the, the homes are gone. There's not as much help in them as they used to, because uh, they weren't permitted to hire people during the war, you know. No, wait, say, who, who wasn't permitted to? I mean, the, the rich couldn't hire people on the street. Oh, more servants, you mean? Yes, oh, that's oh, right. Oh, I didn't know that. If they, if they wanted to go to work and uh, avoid the service, mm -hmm. uh, they would get into the, one of the big homes. Some of them did. Some of them, of course, were members of the families. But uh, it, uh, there was uh, so much activity in that respect. No, I told you, I have all the names of the, I have all the names of the people of Newport there without pulling it apart in the foyer now. In here? Yes, they were in the, in the Red Cross chapter. Oh. Hmm. And uh, I have a whole lot of that stuff about. But what I'm uh, trying to get is that uh, they were all prominent people, including, for example, Bill Vanderbilt yeah. and his wife. Mm -hmm. And I got to know them all very, very well, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you could, excuse me, you could make a... Uh, you can make a chapter around them without too much trouble. <laughs> well, I'm sure. That's very interesting. Hmm. Um, what was Maid's Night Out? Well, that was, uh, <clears throat> that was fade, faded out during the war. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's use the date of Wednesday or Thursday. And, uh, that was one night that out of the, you see, they, they worked those people right around the clock and the people lived there and so on. And there was one night that they could meet and get together. I think the uh, maid's night out then was Thursday and it was on the cliff, cliff walk, you know where the 40 steps are? And they used to meet down there on Thursday and certain other times if they could. And it was quite an institution. Oh, God. And who was in the midst of it? My father. Because he was a piccolo player. Really? Yeah, much to my surprise. He could play anything. And to come from Ireland, out of the potato fields and that sort of thing. I don't know, but... Would they dance? 
Oh, that's what it was, concrete. Mm -hmm. They danced there until one, two, three o'clock in the morning. And the, and the public began to come around there, crowded, but that was Maid's Night Out. They all knew they would be at the four steps and so on and so And it, it, it was really an institution, and it lasted a couple of years after the war. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Well, uh, maybe we can quickly go on to the next subject which is the Fall River Line. Fall River Line? <laughs> maybe, maybe we should stop. It's about, okay, why it's don't we defer that hours. until the next time? All right. The Fall River Line. Um, do you re did you ever travel on the Fall River oh, Line? Oh, frequently. Did you? To go to New York, you had to get on the Fall River Line. Mm -hmm. It was Fall River, uh, New York to Fall River and vice versa. But it stopped in Newport. Mm -hmm. At nine, and left here as a general rule about 9.30 at night. Mm -hmm. And arrived in New York seven o'clock the next day. Oh yes, frequently. Mm -hmm. You know, that that uh, that was a lovely big boat. There isn't anything around here now like it. It was palatial, palatial. And that was a lovely ride. And, and you got there the next morning, if you went to bed, just slept, you woke up in time to get up and go to work. Did you, uh, you never worked for the line. Did you know anybody who worked yes, for the line? Yes, I knew O'Brien, uh, and I knew the two men, and uh, three of them, that worked for them here. Um, O'Brien was more or less the manager, and, and uh, uh, what's his name, worked in there with him. What's his name, that's a good help for you. And, <laughs> and, uh, also, um, <clears throat> gee, you you are at any rate causing me to realize of how much I'm you getting forgot. old. How much you forgot? Well, I think we all doing the same thing. But what other than uh, Mr. O'Brien? What sort of jobs did the people you well had? they uh, the, there was a freight man there whose name doesn't come to me for the moment. He he took care of the freight. They they came put the freight on board and took it to New York and sometimes brought some up and took the freight off. But it went from Fall River to Newport to New York and that was a freight job and of course they had a ticket office there. They were a very lively ticket office. Where? On Longmore? Right, next part of the structure that was there, yes. And they had shops too, to, 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 for outfitting. Well, them. they had some, a couple of little shops aboard the, mm -hmm. aboard the craft, yeah. Yeah, they, they had a very good organization. Um, there was Long Wharf, uh, there were shops in the, on Long Wharf and on the Point too, I've been told, that um, serviced the Fall River Line boat. Well, yes, yes, I would say that's a, <clears throat> that's, that's a fair mm -hmm. uh, indication. They, they did, they had to buy the equipment and uh, uh, a lot of things they had to go aboard the boat, so they sold it and sold them there, and they took things off there and so on. Yeah, somebody was correct on that. Did the Fall River Line bring many tourists, do you think? Do you remember <clears throat> groups of tourists coming? Well, no, do you see? The Fall River Line ran from Fall River to New York. <clears throat> now, it stopped in Newport mm -hmm. to pick up people that were going to New York, so they wouldn't bring much in, you see, would they? No, but what about coming up? Uh, you York? took the words out of my mouth. Coming up, there, there was this situation because we'd get on the boat in New York at 5 o'clock, and uh, we'd get off here to 2.30 or 3, or we'd stay on and go to 4 of them. But definitely a number of people got off here. You don't know, remember big crowds that would overrun the city or anything? No. No. I'll leave that mm. What about when the Fall River Line closed? Was it a shock or did it not make much difference? Well, yes, it was a shock in a sense. It did make a difference. Uh, I think they were being kicked around for one reason or another, and uh, it was, seemed to me that it was ultimate. It was, got, it was going to be, but it hadn't. Uh, <clears throat> 
it hadn't uh, left, it didn't leave much of an impact because it was in a sense a part-time shop here. And Fall River and New York were the main places. Yeah. But uh, they sold tickets and uh, a few things as such. But that was, a, uh, if you haven't been on that boat, <clears throat> that was a palatial craft. Palatial. Take it once. Um, are there any other special memories of the Fall River Line? That you want me to tell you secrets? Mind? Yes, why don't you sure tell me secrets? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> Sticking my mind is well, there were problems with it, <laughs> which maybe you'd rather not mention. Uh, getting alongside the dock, it was a big boat, and, and with the wind of a storm, you know, they had to. They had to figure on their timing and that sort of thing. But it, it was quite an institution for its time. And uh, the summer people came in, you see, back and forth from New York, and they got off here, 3.30 in the morning, and they were home. They were home. Yes, I made many a trip on it. When I say many a trip, I'll say in a, certainly a number. Mm. Well, very good. Um, let's move on to your memories of um, the Depression years in Newport. Um, do you remember any particular event about the stock market crash and what it was like in Newport? Was it, uh, what kind of an impact did it have? Or perhaps not much of an impact? Uh, not much of an impact, yeah, no. It didn't have much of an impact. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what signs of the Depression do you remember in Newport? Stores closing, unemployment? Well, there would have been unemployment at the dock of the Fall River Line. Yes, that, uh, uh, there was unemployment there and jobs were lost and some of them had been there for a long time. Long time. Steamship people and so on. There we are. Now we're going again. What about the effects of the Depression on you? Did you feel the pinch? Did you? Well, I'm afraid that I was a, a little young, and I wouldn't have too much comprehension. Maybe I could uh, think out of something. Um, well, what about your neighborhood and the, you know, your people around you, um, or any of them laid off or unemployed? Well, no, not enough, <clears throat> not enough to be of any serious consequence. Mm -hmm. And then it was a time factor. It took some time for the job places to close up. But mm -hmm. I remember a couple of them in the so-called New England Steamship Company. That was a corporation name here. And some of them had been like the Alros had been there for a long time. Yes, that's mentioned in here when the New England Steamship Company closed down. Do you think that uh, did that threatened Newport's recovery from the Depression? No, dear. Oh. No. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't that big. Mm -hmm. Did you notice any time when the Depression turned around and when there was more employment, more optimism? Well, I don't think that there was enough of emphasis on what we might have lost to note its recouping. Mm -hmm. The Navy, uh, the military people, they moved around probably in bigger numbers and some ships in and out, and the naval training station, that was a factor. But as far as the the civilian populace has has been in life in Newport. Yeah. I don't remember <clears throat> anything that's outstanding. Mm. All right, very good. Now we're getting to more modern times. What about the hurricane of 1938? Was that the first one? Modern? Yes, that was the first big one, September mm. 1938. Yeah. Um, were you in Newport? What I happened? was very much in Newport. Where exactly were you? Uh, well, 
Do you remember? We, we had just finished building the house. We hadn't been married very long. In 1938. All, all nicely painted and so on. I, I, uh, Were you at home? I was at work. Home, yes. At, uh, well, we could see it coming. So, um, me working on a paper, I had to, uh, mm -hmm. I had to stay on the job. Mm -hmm. And however. I did go home probably around midnight that night, but I was up at five or six o'clock the next morning and covered everything. I was Do you remember trees blown down? Oh my the God, floor? yes. They, they had, when I walked out here on the avenue from wherever I was, those massive, beautiful trees, I looked down the avenue and the one thought in my mind, Newport is destroyed forever. Mm -hmm. Because that's all you could see, these beautiful trees mm -hmm. everywhere. It was a sight that uh, was not, not nice to look at. And yet, in a matter of a couple of days, it seems to me, uh, basically, it was clear that. Really? But what about your own house? Was that all right? Well, we got a little water on it, of course, but not enough to do it any harm. Mm -hmm. You were but, very lucky. Yes. You must have been worried about yes, the new and, house. Yes, and not only that, to see that the... the uh, uh, the seas from the Cliff Walk, boom, mm -hmm. the southeast come in northwest, mm -hmm. and the blue from the, where it hit the cliffs, it came right over our house, gave our house a bath, and oh. salt. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, did you think the hurricane changed Newport permanently in any way? Well, of course, you mentioned the trees all blown down, but other than uh, yes, that that was the saddest view of all. But there were there were so thick and so many mm -hmm. that a uh, couple of days you'd hardly notice it. No, uh, did it, did it have a severe or serious impact on yes. you? Yes. Yes. Not unless you wanted to mention some nice uh, stone or metal gates that were down on the mm -hmm. cliffs and. Uh, were expensive and that sort of thing. Some of those uh, might not have been replaced. You don't think it, it turned away, say, summer people who did never came back anymore or things like that? Well, there's always that possibility, but it was worse elsewhere than mm -hmm. it was here. <laughs> no, in, uh, in other words, did the storm ruin it in part? No. No, I, uh, I I thought that uh, next morning that I had roomed it uh, for a long while because one of the things I did was to go along the avenue and get a view from Levin Street down to the beach. Mm -hmm. And I looked out from where I stopped on, on Levin Street, as they call it then. And uh, I looked across that beach, and here, look at my face and my eyes. Couldn't comprehend what had happened. That beautiful beach was gone. Which beach was this? First beach? Newport Beach. Newport first beach. First beach. Bailey's is almost as bad, if not worst. Hazard was all the beaches got a heck of a beaten. I can repeat, but to me looking out, I've got to write something about this. I can't, I can't see the beach, it's gone. <laughs> the main building where the restaurant was and so on, that was there in part. Mm -hmm. But all the little places along there, and all the little houses all around the shore, they were like the little boxes piled up on. It was pretty hard to believe, pretty hard to believe. Well, because of your business, you must have heard of all the dramatic stories. Do you remember any particular dramatic events or stories, you know, that oh, happened? Oh dear, because if of I had my mind refreshed, I could tell you some of <laughs> the boats, the yachts, and mm -hmm. so much. If I had a 24 hours or something to remember, well, I guess there was... Was there much loss of life in this part? No, no, there was not there. Not even on the water where they were tied up. Very little, if any. Very little, if any. And you think that rebuilding was fairly quick in Newport? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, now, uh, 
You see the, the storms coming up, coming up the bay. They, they would beat in from the cliffside, and uh, all, all the beautiful homes were there. And there was very little harm done to any of them. I, I was probably as close as any of the big houses. Well, some of them got a wedding and the wind blowing. Uh, uh, no, as I remember, as I remember now, I can't remember anything that, if I were writing the story, I might improve it. It might include it, which you are doing. <clears throat> well, very good. Let's move up to more modern times, um, the era of World War II and uh, things that went on at the, and the sort of huge growth of the torpedo station. Um, I worked over the top years. Yes, you said you did. Now, what years were you there? Were you there during World War II? I went over there. I was only a kid, and I was too young to go to work over there. So uh, <laughs> I put on long pants, <laughs> and, 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 and no one made my application. And in those days, of course, the beginning of war, they wanted all the men and kids and women and everything they could get, so I got a job over there. And I worked in the, uh, I worked in the uh, experimental department. Mm -hmm. We used to, uh, we used to experiment with the uh, warheads, the uh, torpedoes, the aerial bombs, and anything that was new or being put into use at the time, it was our job to take them and experiment with them and prove them and so on, in the bay, out on the water, up in the air, or wherever we went. And you worked there in the 1940s? I worked the there survey? for a couple of years, yeah. During the 40s? Yes. During the Second World War? Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, um, how did you do your, how did you get back and forth? Do you remember the ferry going? Ferry back and forth. I think I mentioned the other day, mm -hmm. the uh, magazine blew up. The magazine was just a one, two, three, four, five, say six concrete structures tied in more or less on the waterfront, right on the shore almost, so that if there was occasion to, they should, should be blown up by uh, submarines or anything, uh, it would all go out in the water, see? And as a matter of fact, I was going from the experimental department, which we used to call the mine shed, down to the magazine to store some black powder containers that we uh, used to put in one of those magazines way down the end. And you're gonna visualize me coming being well, they'll even say a hundred yards, and they have this terrific blow. It was blocked from me, or from my location there, because it was banked up so that it would go out in the water, see. But nevertheless, a very unusual explosion, although it was partly submerged by the fact that it was covered with dirt. So I just stood there, I can visualize myself knowing what do I do? Do I continue to go down? Will I wait to see what happens? Shall I get the hell out of here now? <laughs> mm. and, and there was naturally there was considerable commotion everywhere for a while until people thought that the executive officer at the torpedo station told us later that he ran down those stairs and he was hollering. Uh, the submarines were, were blasting the torpedo station. They weren't, the problem, they weren't visible, but he said submarines are firing on us and so on. So that was one little incident, which wasn't the case. Where did you live in Newport during the war? <clears throat> we had built a house, just you, finished it. You just finished your house? Yeah, uh -huh. on uh, Middleton Avenue. Yeah. Uh -huh. M-I-D-D-L-E-T-O-N. Thank you. That's, well, it, uh, most people will confuse it, but think it's part of Middletown, yeah. mm -hmm. between Parker Avenue and Berkeley Avenue. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, there were a couple of lots there, and uh, we we had <laughs> just about finished when we were smothered in rain and that sort of thing. Did uh, how did Newport change during the Second World War? Is, as the it with the influx of the military, what were your impressions of the changes? Well, there were some, but there was nothing majestic, nothing uh, overwhelming, because it was getting built up by degrees for a number of years. Uh, did, did many of your friends take uh, war jobs? Or? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, How about civilian construction jobs at naval sites? All, all kinds of jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now, in my case, for example, I was working for the <coughs> federal government, and I couldn't be taken by the draft, or the people like me in that job, couldn't be taken out of our jobs because we were doing experimental, you see. It was vital to the war, positively vital to the war. We were not to be disturbed, except once or twice when we almost blew up our craft. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know anybody that worked at the USO or the Red Cross or for the those? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I knew them all. I guess. Did you? Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, the uh, the emphasis uh, you could put on uh, women of the uh, social uh, summer colony. They 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 went to work. Yeah, the women in Newport they never had to do any work. They. Uh, the Robinson House, for example, you can mention that. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Robinson was, a, I think she might have been a widow at the time, and she had a big house in K Street, <coughs> which bore um, well, the name Robinson House. And she got a, oh, a lot of women in there for training and all that sort of thing. Robinson House, K Street, that's worthy of a compliment. That must have been. Um, um, Red Cross work or Well, something? no. The Red Cross, we had our own place, the Red Cross did. Mm -hmm. I was active in the Red Cross. Yes, you were. I was uh, uh, acting chairman, I think, uh, vice chairman, chairman of the chapter and acting chairman when the war got going and Mark Sullivan had to go out of town. So I was <clears throat> I was really acting chairman of the Red Cross in the port in, in that respect. Do you remember the kind of security measures um, that Newport Newporters had to um, comply with, such as uh, blackout curtains? Oh yes, oh yes, yes. That was a pretty thorough job, and in the nighttime there had to be no lights, and the training station had extra men in the docks, extra men everywhere, and. Uh, particularly when that German submarine came in here. And that picked us up maybe a little more. Yeah, they, 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 became, they came in after a neutral flag and stayed in the harbor for a while. What was that? The U-51, the I think, German submarine. Hmm. And it, um, Do you think people in Newport felt threatened by the uh, all the military preparations, or maybe they felt more secure? How do you th how do you think they felt? Well, if any, if anything, more secure, because mm -hmm. there, there was nothing new in this. This had been building up slow, and it had previous experience and with a war experience before, so it, it wasn't a new thing for the people in Newport. Mm -hmm. Training station had built up and so on. Do you remember VJ Day or VE Day in Newport? <clears throat> Celebrations? Or? Well, I think they came along later, the year or two following, didn't well, they? Well, that was the end of the war. Mm -hmm. First VE Day and then VJ oh, yes. Day, which is August tests, the holiday we still celebrate. Well, there was, there was little emphasis. I got a couple of pictures of there were a lot of people on the street, but. Uh, no. There was no, as I remember, there was no massive or great assemblage to celebrate either one of those. Uh, um, 
not too certain on an accurate on all of these things, but Newport had been through so much of it, I guess, that it was, uh, in a sense. Well, let's get even uh, more recent and talk about a little bit about what you remember of the jazz festival. You, uh, your office is very close to where the original festivals are. Do you remember uh, um, the scene during the early jazz festival? Well, I remember as far as I was concerned, the whole thing was despicable. <laughs> you obviously never, you, must, you never went to one, did you? No. No, and I didn't, uh, I was no dancer. Uh, That's not your kind of music, no, right? No, I fortunately I had some I had some good music training along the way, and uh, and I appreciated good music. I do to this day. I was uh, named uh, uh, on the city and state committees for, uh, for all that sort of thing, and I had an office in Providence and included that sort of thing. So I was in a position to be helpful to the state of Rhode Island in the right direction. Do you remember the riots? Well, I would say, dear, there was, there wasn't sufficient to impress me mm -hmm. with riots. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think I could put my finger on one place and say there was a riot there. Those things were exaggerated anyhow. You think so? Yeah. Um, so you don't have any feeling about how Newport handled the jazz festival and the crowds? And well, of one course, the, the people other. were all for it. The people as a whole were all for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, had to be among the exceptions to the rule. But, uh, <laughs> that, that, um, that jazz festival, he, even to this day, it could go. <laughs> yeah. well. yeah. Okay, some new quarters feel very strongly about it. I think that's why they, they do it. even now. Mm -hmm. They do even now. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, and coming at uh, around the end of the war, during the war, they needed an outlet, and that was it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, now let's go on to your thoughts about Newport's um, restoration and redevelopment. Um, when were you aware that parts of the city were falling to pieces or deteriorating and needed to be restored? At no time did that 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 uh, at no time could you fit that into a, a sentence or two, to, to my way of thinking. No, go ahead. So, uh, no, I I don't remember anything mm -hmm. falling apart, mm -hmm. and I'd be candid enough to tell you, we'll put it down. Did you, uh, were you aware of Newport, how old Newport was and the fact that some of these buildings were hundreds and hundreds of years old? Well, I had to be because um, being a newspaper man and being a historian in a sense, I was quite acquainted with it. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the shot tower worried some people. Um, maybe you would like to mention that. You never saw the shot tower. Shot Tower was a big red brick chimney, I'm saying, maybe two or three hundred feet in the air. And it was used for making bullets. There was only one or two others in the world. And uh, the people would work at the top of that tower and they'd roll, roll the bullet and lead and drop it down into water down below maybe 150, 200 feet when they'd cool off and take form. And that... Uh, Where was the shot tower? Right on the waterfront. Right on the waterfront, down the, uh, Wellington Avenue, uh, Cuttington, Cuttington Wharf there. And it was quite unusual. And then uh, during a storm or a fire or something, it lost some of the top and some more was taken off. And, and it was decided that maybe for safety's sake, we better take it down. That time we knew and learned of only one other someplace. And I'm not sure that was even in this country. Did, was anyone in, did you know anyone or anyone in your neighborhood 
or other neighborhoods that was had to move because of the redevelopment and the restoration? Anybody who had to get out of their houses to because of the war? No, no, because of the restoration, because oh. of redevelopment. This is oh. more recent after the war. Um, well, for instance, you know when um, Doris Duke um, was restoring and moving houses around. Do you know anyone who had to move out of their house because of a restoration project? Well, I suppose I should know. I knew Doris, as a matter, a matter of fact. She doesn't know it, and it's not necessary to put in there. But the, the Casino Theater opened each Wednesday night with a new show. And Doris Duke always sat alone on the aisle, about the fourth or fifth seat back. And I always sat immediately behind her because I was the critic of the, and I had to be close enough. And she was always right in front of me. I never told her about myself, or, but I don't think I ever bothered, bothered to say anything to her about it. But, um, I, I don't, I it don't didn't affect your, re, the restoration of all the old buildings didn't really affect your neighborhood, did it? Uh, the area that I lived in? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. no it didn't. Uh, it would have it would have affected where I am now. Mm. That was an old building, but to see the one, we had just moved in there. Mm. In the one <laughs> well, this was, I'm talking about the restoration that yes. took place in the yes. 60s, 1960s, yeah. 1970s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were, uh, we had sold our house down there. We moved uh, mm -hmm. up into uh, Clay Street. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, very interesting. Um, what about the Newport Bridge and the ferry? Do you remember the Newport Ferry? <laughs> well, they called it the Jamestown Ferry. That's right, that's right. Yes, I went back and forth on it a hundred times, mm -hmm. I guess. Did you go uh, for pleasure to Jamestown or oh, on business yeah. or oh, both? Well, oh. mm -hmm. but uh, to get the other side, to go down into Connecticut and New York, you had to cross on the ferry. Okay. Yeah. What do you remember about riding on the ferry? Well, it was refreshing. Uh, the ferry was never immaculately clean. <laughs> yeah. I was in my next question, I was going to ask you if you remember what it was like and whether there were any problems with it. Well, as far as the mechanics of it, I don't think there was any real problems, mm -hmm. but it was handled uh, by a few people and it was, it had two stories or more mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was never, uh, was never maintained uh, in a manner that it might be what it was running today. How did you feel about building the uh, bridge to Jamestown? Well, I think perhaps I was a little young to have a full appreciation of the impact it was to have. 1969. 1969. Uh, it was a boon, of course, mm -hmm. to people on both sides of the bay. Uh, but there are a great many didn't like the thought of it, while others had to see it used. How did it change Newport? Well, in, in a sense, it was just the reverse. The people going out of town, all the Newporters, they used to have to go out and around and mile corner and so on. And now they could go right down to the dock and on the ferry and be over the other side in a matter of, well, half an hour. Mm -hmm. And that was a great help. Mm -hmm. That, that, that was very good, both the going and coming. So it's made it much easier to oh, get in yes, and out of Newport. Oh, yes, by all means. Do and you think that it's brought men, more people to Newport that wouldn't have come otherwise? I would say yes, mm -hmm. yeah. But on the other hand, there were people that, uh, there were a great many people ensconced here that uh, didn't like the idea of having Newport changed in mm -hmm. its character and upset, so. A lot of them would, would sooner have not disturbed. 
Now the next to last subject is um, um, the pullout of the Navy just 10 years ago, just recently. Remember when the Navy decided to pull out its, uh, they left, oh, we still well, have the uh, office. That was before. a goddamn president of ours. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't pull out, he was, he was, he forced them out. He was a no good SOB. Mm -hmm. And he had just got kicked in his pants and this is, this is what he did to Newport and one or two other. But the funny part of it was the Ed militated the for Newport. So instead of having a whole lot of sailors kicking around, then they got educators coming in, and it absolutely, it worked to the reverse. So you think it had a positive effect? Oh, pos no two ways about it. It was really a boon to Newport. Because after all, those ships, every day they would let out hundreds of sailors, and you know what, hundreds of sailors. You know what one will do around the community, let alone hundreds of them. Oh yes, it, it, it definitely was one of the best things that ever happened for Newport. Mm -hmm. Why do you think so many Navy people have retired here? Because it's Newport. The climate, quote, is the most salubrious, I can show it to you, in the King's statement here, in all, of all your majesty's possessions. That is a direct quote. Yeah being made by the engineer who came here for the king. So there's a basic, most salubrious, the weather, the location, climate. They still come here today. That's true, it, they uh, do. Our last subject is the America's Cup. Do you have any early recollections of the old big J-boats? Yes, I certainly do very, very much. I even got pictures there, maybe a dozen of them. I got histories there. Oh, okay. As I was a, I was a... So you saved clippings and Oh, about yes, I've got clippings. Well, I was, see those two files? Yeah. I, I've got them at home, I've oh, got yeah. them along here. Oh. I got pictures. Were you uh, directly involved at all with any of the races? Uh, in the earlier time in the preliminaries, but uh, uh, like a time or a, a not in the official, not in the official race, no, I didn't say out directly. And outside of writing criticisms of it or writing about it, but I didn't, uh, I didn't have any official capacity. Do you think the America's Cup race um, had a beneficial effect in Newport? Oh yes, no two ways about that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's a unique institution. <laughs> now I can see the morning paper revealed that 23. I saw that. Did you? 23 different, different groups yeah. are trying to yeah. go. <laughs> now, where the devil are they going to have it? Are they going to have that here or will they have it they'll all have, over the world? They'll have to have that in Australia, but I guess they'll have different trials and different parts of the world. So do you think the America's Cup brought um, different kinds of people and different um, foreign elements to yeah, the Oh yes, that was a, the America's Cup was, was a great thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to go down every day because of the New York Yacht Club.